Hello and welcome to the third video in the iNav 2.1 Bixler V1.1 and Brain FPV Radix flight controller build out. In the previous two videos, if you haven't already seen those, I'd recommend going back and watching them. We've talked about the project and we flashed the flight controller, we've created the wiring loom and we've wired everything together. So now we need to spend a little bit of time on the bench, just dialing everything in, setting it up for this particular aircraft in software. And then once we've done that, we can do the first couple of test flights. Now, all of the process that I'm going to go through here is documented in the iNav wiki, but it's worthwhile me showing you the steps that I follow to make sure that everything works. There are a couple of common gotchas that pilots make when they're putting iNav together, which means when they try and use iNav, it crashes their plane into the ground. The first and most important step is plug back into iNav and go into the radio tab. Make sure that when the sticks on the radio are in the top right position, this is the Motu radio that I have here, that all the channel values in iNav are at their maximum values. That is a really important step. That's the foundation that all the other adjustments are going to be made on from here on in. Once that's done, go into the Configurator tab, make sure that you have the right settings for the servos and the ESC. The default values are perfect for analog servos and bog basic plain ESC. So that's what I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna enable that, and then we can go back to the bench and try and move everything. Once that's done, obviously with your props off, plug in the power in the model, and then move the controls on your radio to see whether the control outputs on the plane are the right way round. Now, in very, now, surprise, surprise, all three of mine were backwards, but I also had another little wrinkle. My rudder wasn't moving at all, so I spent a happy 20 minutes making sure that all the cabling was okay, and it was. But what I had to do was come back into Configurator, go back into the Mixer tab, and change the number, or drop it down one for the rudder. That reconfigured the entire Mixer, and when it rebooted, the rudder was working fine. But unfortunately, they were all backwards. But that's not a big deal. What we need to do is go into the servo tab in iNav and reverse each of those directions and save it. And you should find the controls are working in the right way. Do not reverse it in the radio. That is a common mistake. And that's part of the reason that people get stuck. While you're in the servo tab, and then change the midpoints for each of the servos to put the servos back where they need to be on the model. So they're either, as I'm doing here, in line with all the control surfaces, because we're going to use servo auto trim as part of the flight, or you put them back to where they needed to be when you manually flew the plane, so it was trimmed to fly straight and level. Now that we've done all that, we know that all the control surfaces are working in the right direction, and they correspond to the radio perfectly when it's in manual mode. The next thing to do is pop it into angle mode and rock the plane from side to side, front to back. And if you've done those first two steps perfectly, you should find that the control surfaces are moving to correct the uncommanded movement. Spend a little bit of time triple checking that this is the case, because if something doesn't work, then you've probably done one of the previous two setup steps wrong. So as well as setting up a manual and angle mode, I would also recommend setting up the servo auto trim mode on a switch as well. We're going to need that to get those middle channel positions spot on when we fly for the first time. We can if we know how the nose needs to be. Uh, usually the attitude of any craft is slightly nose up. If you know what that is, you can kind of level that out on the bench and then offset that in the configurator so that I nav knows that that is supposed to be straight and level flight. But we'll come back to that and we'll do that in the next step after the first flight because we do need to just test everything first. Then we need to go through all the settings that recommended in the iNav wiki to just change it so it'll be perfect for a fixed wing model. Now this seems really complicated, but don't worry, just go through each of them and set them up. So the max angle inclination for roll and pitch, that is in degrees, so we're setting them for 60 degrees. So we mean that we can bank uh, to 60 degrees side to side in angle mode. 60 degrees is probably about right for most planes, if you find that you can't turn quickly enough, you can increase that value. Set small angle equals 180. That is whether or not iNav can be armed in any position, and we want that. We're going to set nav, return to home, allow landing to never. Uh, whereas with a multi-rotor, iNav will land the model. We don't want that for this. We just want the plane to loiter above us, and hopefully we'll be able to reconnect with the model. Or if it comes down, we've got a chance of it landing somewhere in the field in front of us. Check on the nav RTH climb first. 
I would recommend that that needs to be on so that it climbs first before flying back to you. That way it doesn't accidentally, if it's gone the far side of um, a building or some trees or something, it climbs and then it will be over the top of those obstructions which may have caused the fail safe in the first place. Set the nav RTH altitude. By default it's a lot less than this, uh, 7000 is 70 meters. Set it to the height that's going to clear the obstacles around you. Set the failsafe throttle low delay to zero. That allows you for gliding. In a multi-rotor, of course, if the throttle's off for any length of time, you're going to crash anyway, and you uh, need to initiate an emergency return to home or a failsafe. With something like a Bixler, I could be flying around for quite a while, potentially on a nice sunny day in the thermals, so I don't want iNav thinking that something horrible's gone wrong if the throttle's off for a long time. Set the failsafe procedure is return to home. We kind of did that in the last session, but it's also good to check that the CLI has that. Set iNav reset home equals first arm. And what that's going to do is make sure that iNav remembers the home position when it was first armed. So if you accidentally catch the arm switch when you're in the air and you know, you're 500 meters away and you quickly catch it back and rearm it and recover the craft, that's then not going to be treated as the new home position. And then check all of the settings, starting with FW underscore. Those are all the fixed wing settings. Again, you can go and check the wiki for the meaning of every single one of these CLI settings. A couple of last things that I've done. I've enabled auto launch and air mode to be on all the time. Air mode to be on all the time is very handy because it means that you have full control even at zero throttle, which is going to happen an awful lot more in a fixed wing than it will in a multi-rotor. And enabling auto launch means that you don't assign that to a switch. The plane, when you arm it, is always feeling for when you've thrown it and auto launch is great. You just kind of give the plane a, a big jerk before you throw it and the motor starts and iNav will just do all the rest for you. Final thing to do is just double check that the failsafe all works, turn your radio off on the bench, make sure that you can see that happening. And once we've gone through all that, we are probably ready for our first flight of the field. So I'm going to just glue the iNav flight controller into place, use a couple of cocktail sticks to keep it in position. I'll end up having to cut a little hole out the side of the model to get the USB connector, but now we can go to the field. So it's a beautiful day at the field and we have a little bit of wind but not much and I would always try and maiden it on a reasonably calm day because we're going to do a couple of things. First of all do your pre-flight checks make sure that all the control surfaces are working in the right way and that the corrections working in the right way as well and that nothing has accidentally happened. It's amazing how often the following day when you come to check it you realize that you made a mistake. We're not going to take off until the GPS have a lock. Initially, we're going to fly in manual mode, make sure that's OK. We'll do servo auto trim to get all of the control positions in the where they need to be for straight and level flight. Then once we're happy with that, we'll try in angle, make sure that iNav is working OK. If that works, then I will probably try it in a GPS loiter. And then once that works, then we'll probably bite the bullet and we'll try a GPS return to home. So I'm going to show you the on-screen display footage that I recorded from the maiden flight. So this is the entire maiden flight. I'm not going to edit it just so you can see how it goes. Now we've just launched the craft and I'm flying it line of sight here uh, from the ground took off in manual mode. I haven't trimmed the craft at all and this is why having the control surfaces in roughly the positions they were when you pre-flew the model in manual mode without iNav is great because to be honest at this point it's going to be pretty spot on so long as the center of gravity hasn't moved. So I'm just flying around now and hopefully you can see in the on-screen display how beautiful it is in the radix. Everything is moving gorgeously. Now in the very top line that black bar that's moving around is the rapid fire um, on-screen display information. Underneath that you've got the compass, speed on the left, altitude on the right in meters. Uh, we have the battery consumption left hand side, fly time bottom right hand side. So now I'm happy that we're flying in manual. I'm going to pop it into servo auto trim and try and fly straight and level for a couple of seconds and then fly around. And what that should do is rather than use the trims on the radio, iNav will figure out where the control surfaces need to be and save those new positions when we come and land as the new defaults. So you keep it in servo auto trim uh, before you come in. Now, I've switched into angle mode just to test that out. And again, I was ready to pop straight back into manual if something horrible happened, but actually angle mode 
is working nicely. We haven't got any flips or rolls of death. It hasn't suddenly died for the ground, so I know all my corrective movements are good. The other thing you'll notice, I have the map set up in the middle of the on-screen display, and that little H is the home icon, and it's moving around the middle to show me exactly, relatively, how far away home is, and also in what direction it is. So I'm pretty comfortable here. This is looking really nice. We've got uh, good control. Everything's working beautifully. So I'm popping it now into GPS hold. Now what's going to happen is the plane is going to fly itself and it's just going to fly in a big circle. So at this point, I've got my finger hovering over the sticks, but I've actually let go. So at the moment, it's just flying a circle and the radius is quite big. I could probably drop down the loiter radius in the CLI here. Um, it doesn't need to be this big, but it's circling over the pond. Probably not a great place to do it. So back into manual mode and we'll do a little bit more flying. I'll take it slightly further away before I initiate a return to home. So the first thing it's going to do is start to climb and it's going to turn for home and start to come back towards me. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because the manual stuff seems to work fine, the angle mode seems to work fine, the loitering is working okay, so I know the GPS seems to be happy. So this is the final test, really, as part of this. Once it's reached the home location, then it is going to loiter around the home position. Again, the loiter radius is probably a little bit too big. Um, the Bixler could easily do a slightly tighter one, but it's working fine. It means it's overhead and working great. Now, one of the things you might have noticed here, I've got the pitch and roll angles displayed at the bottom. Now, I tend to record these as part of a first flight because they're very handy to see how the flight controller feels the craft is flying. And these are also very handy on the bench. If you have these displayed initially in the first couple of flights, if you put the craft in the attitude that's needed for straight and level flight. Maybe the nose needs to be up a little bit. You might find when it goes into angle mode that it loses height. Then what you can do is put it on the bench, put the wing straight and level, put something under the nose to lift it slightly, and then look in the on-screen display and see what the offset is. And then in the configuration screen with the board alignment, just change the numbers to match it. So if it's maybe the pitch is 2.2 degrees, go into the configurator, offset the pitch angle by 2.2 degrees, and then have a look in the on-screen display again to see whether or not that's at zero. The idea is just to keep going through it so that the pitch and roll on the bench when it's straight and level is zero for both of them. And then you know that that's the attitude, slightly nose up usually, that the board is going to aim for. Now I'm reasonably happy in this flight that everything is working. Then I've just popped it back into manual mode. With the Bixler, it's so naturally stable anyway. I don't really need to fly in angle. Putting it in angle just removes some of that uncommanded movement, acting like a stabilizer. The next flight I could do after this would absolutely be an auto-tune just to make sure it's all working fine. But hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have been looking to get iNav onto some form of fixed wing. iNav 2.1 is a great operating system, but you do have to do a couple of things just to make sure that it's going to work for you. Not doing those pre-flight checks and not doing that setup means that your maiden might not go as smoothly as this. But if you follow each of the steps that we've gone through over the last two or three videos in terms of how to wire it up and the settings, then hopefully the Maiden will go as well as this one. So the only thing I need to do here is to land the plane and then to disarm it while still in the servo auto trim mode. And those new mid positions for the servos for manual mode will be saved down into iNav Configurator. So if you have any questions about iNav or setting up a plane, then pop them on these videos and I'll do my best to give you a hand. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too.
If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.